Unfortunately, I don't think what you're asking for is unreasonable. <laughs> Thank you so much in seeing the validity in my concern. You know, like I'm, I'm hearing you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm understanding right. you. And I'm, sadly, I'm kind of taking your side on, on this more than mine. Sure, sure. Wild till nine. Are you ready? Yep, let's go home. Wild till nine. Bow. <laughs> That's supposed to be the end, I thought. That was, isn't that the end? Hi, Latvia. How are you? <laughs> let's flip it. Let's do it in reverse. Oh, all right, we're starting at, the, fuck, but we usually, we always we always start with something, We I feel like we always end with like something really, really good though. You know, let's end boring. Right. And bring in all the excitement then, to the front. Nah, okay. fuck it. We'll keep it to the boring stuff. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. What's up, babe? Perfect. Hi guys, welcome Hello. back to Wild Till Nine. Hello, yesterday was 4th of July and uh, not a sunburn in sight. And just real quick, as the Canadian in the room. Yes. What was 4th of July celebrating? I gonna be honest, I yesterday before asking, I would have failed the immigration test that I think I have to take. I was setting you up just to sound really- Oh, no, 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 we keep it real here. I, I have no, independence. From? Great Britain? Yeah, for the most part. England? Yeah, it's like, you know- The Queen? What year? Oh, 18. Great start. 18? Yep. 44. That's basically it, yeah. What is it? 1776. Oh fuck, I knew it was 17. I literally said, do you remember? I was like, oh, I think it's the Hamilton. I think in Hamilton, it's like 1776. Isn't that, isn't that part of an Ham I, I'm, I've only seen half of the Hamilton movie. I've never even seen like the Broadway. I, every, you you can't, I I have such a hot take on Hamilton. Yeah, I know. Do yeah. you want to, maybe we should start with something hot and juicy. I know, just like if you want to talk about hot trash, let's just talk about Hamilton. Jeremy hates Hamilton. No, okay. I just, Clip it and put it up. Broadway talk. I just think that there's more, uh, there's other, uh, congrats to my buddy, Brian Carter, winning a Tony on the, uh, <laughs> this year uh, on, on the show. He helped uh, uh, some like it hot? beautiful music together. Yes. Yeah, some yes. Like it hot. No, I just like, I don't, uh, to me, it didn't, it didn't move me like other. Okay. But also like, I feel like I'm almost like, I'm showing my age as a purist. I'm like, they would have never done this back in, like, I just want everything to be rent apparently. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I have absolutely or tick, tick, nothing boom, to a contribute. Deep cut. Right, I, I tried to download that movie with Andrew Garfield for a plane and I got about two minutes in and I was like, this is not for me. What movie? Tick, Tick, Boom. You watched, oh, the movie. The movie. It was, uh, It was. Uh, I mean, long ago, it was, uh, well, I think it was on Off Broadway. I don't even think I ever made it to Broadway. So it's a deep cut. Well, the movie made it to my Netflix download category. Well, Andrew Garfield was in it. Yeah. Yeah, I always forget he's British. Yeah, me too. That's the sign of like, I, I do think that British actors and directors mm -hmm. are, overall more talented than Americans. Oh, wow, another hot take, oh case, my God. Case in point, well, when it comes to acting, case in point, uh -huh. when's the last time you thought an actor that was American was actually British? I, I just feel like because so much of it is shot in LA, I, people just assume Nothing a shot lot in LA. of it. Uh, right, but like it, it starts in LA with the meetings and the people and the producers and the blah, 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 blah. Yeah, then it goes to Atlanta. Right, 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 to Tyler or Perry's. Vancouver yeah. or Toronto. Yeah, yeah. That's right, shot there. But I always just assume that actors are like- American? Yeah. It's very, very, by the way, you're gonna do great in America. I, <laughs> just assuming things are but ours. It's true, people get their visas to move to LA and New York for Broadway and acting and Hollywood and all of that stuff. Like so you, I, you so little star. Like, yeah, exactly. So I feel like that's not unfair to assume. And now me is your visa ticket. So I already have a visa, so oh. yeah. So what am I? You're my my green card ticket. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. right. Did you want to keep playing with that? Why is it bad for it? Well, it's not good for it. Do you, you can see. I just feel like you're allowed to ravel this cord because the whole rest of this cord is raveled like a pencil. Like yeah. if it were wrapped around a pencil, right? You know, babe, keep, keep playing with it. So I feel like I just keep going. You know, the issue is I, I absorb people's nervous tics. Oh. I, 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 I soak them in. Right. My ADHD. Yeah. Um, did we talk about um, my ADHD self thinking that I had the superpower of reading other people's minds when I was a kid? No, go ahead. Please share with the class. So um, this is on topic. Uh, the thing that I thought when I was sitting in like my first grade class, you mm -hmm. know, looking around the world going like, look at all this, what's new? When people would speak, they would speak so slow and I was so impatient and so ADD, right. so ADHD, that I would, in my mind, just get to where they were about to obviously go. And I convinced myself in my head, I can tell the future. Right, so like, if someone is like, can I go to the and bathroom? Then, right, and you're like, holy, holy shit. shit, I am a superhero. Yeah, like, or like, 
And, and, and also like a problem would go on the board and it's like the, the teacher before they would even ask, like, I was like, mm. I, I know, I just know it immediately. No, like you just can't sit still. Your mind's going way faster than you're thinking. Right. And you think that you're a fortune teller. I need everyone to go into the comments right now and tell Jeremy how great the lights look on the set because he tailored them to perfection for an hour today. And I just feel as if that small child who can't sit still has not left. <laughs> Are you trying to um, put my put my light out right now? I'm telling literally everyone. And, literally and figuratively. I'm literally telling everyone how to go tell you how great the light looks because the light looks great. You were looking at me judgmentally before we started. You with that look of Jeremy, if you don't fucking hurry up, I swear to God. Right. Not that I don't appreciate the mill the mill millimeter that everything just got shifted a little bit, but it's perfect now. Well, for now. Perfect. I, I hear our producer perfect. laughing in the background going, ah. <laughs> why, why do you um No no, it's great. It's great. Do you not like them? Do you They're not like, amazing. You don't like the, the you don't like the time I spent on it. It uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You, you know what? You know what? I think that I just have ten years of experience with um, that I feel like is newer to you mm -hmm. is the essence of good enough. I also have my four years at Ryerson, good enough, but I, I have like the you know what I mean, like the I, I just the the forty five minutes of shifting things millimeters to me. I'm like good enough. It looks fucking great. Let's go. I am a firm believer mm -hmm. in the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Good enough. Uh, I think it could be better, so I want to make it better. Right, but I, I just feel like you could do that for hours and hours and hours and hours. So it's like, where do we draw the line? Right here. At 45 minutes, that's the sure. line. I mean, whenever <laughs> whenever it feels like it I've feels done right. a job that is uh, about as good as I can do, about. See, I just feel like that's where things get like really difficult though, because things could always be better. Things could always be a little bit more perfect. It always could be better, but like, I want it to look like something that I don't mind lives in infamy <laughs> perpetually on the internet forever. We had a little pool party yesterday for 4th of July we, and just had a little barbecue. We kept the firearms at home. And one kept the firearms not anywhere. And- I wouldn't even know actually how to get a firearm in California. I also don't even know where you start with that. But we had everyone out and the house pretty much clean by 6.30 PM on the couch, showered, about to eat some dinner, read my book. And it was so nice. Speaking of firearms, <laughs> uh, I, uh, you know, I got the little pepper spray gun for you. Uh -huh. it, it, it like looks like a little- I like, it's for you. Well, you- we had both, like you have one downstairs okay, and we have one upstairs. Okay. And I got a, gu a little gun safe for like a real gun for, uh -huh. our, little, for our little pepper spray one. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I'm afraid uh -huh. that like, that I'm gonna like reach my hand over one night and just right. like in, a, in like a, a, a sleepy stupor, yep. like like just squirted in my I eyes. I can literally visualize ah! exactly what, yeah, backwards. Like in the, like, just like just, from a movie, uh -huh. from a movie. Yeah. So now we're gonna have a biometric gun safe for our pepper spray. For our pepper spray that yeah. also has the gun safety on the pepper spray. Oh, um, if I never actually, if I actually needed to use it, no chance. Oh yeah, there's no way. Like, I'm just gonna hope that the robber doesn't realize that it's a pepper spray gun. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's right, because it does look pretty, it, it looks, looks gunny. gunny. Babe. Reccolini. Get out of here. <laughs> you wanna get married? <laughs> oh my God, in the spirit of wedding planning. Oh my God. So I've decided because Jeremy has been so busy the last couple of weeks and the wedding process is currently being held up by a few key decisions that I need Jeremy to make with me. Lauren does, Lauren's doing that thing where she sends passive aggressive notifications via like, no, like Notion to my email. That and also I've had to reschedule our wedding planning, just duo meeting so many times because it keeps getting pushed to the back burner. So we are doing wedding planning live. <laughs> so our next task, we mentioned this in the last uh, solo episode is that we have to choose some of our- uh, Wait, We're gonna do wedding planning right now? We are doing wedding planning right now because you uh, have to sit here for at least 55 minutes. And so we're gonna knock it out. Everyone gets to be, a part of this, we can, it just, this is literally wedding planning live. I mean, I, I'm thrilled that everyone gets to join us for this. I'm just glad that we can, I can get this off my to-do list. I'm glad I found time for this. I, this is so great. So maybe every time we have to do like, um, just, you know, a solo app, just the two of us, we'll do more wedding planning and I can just, I can just, you know, two birds, one stone. Babe, I think that this is your way for you to bring up any topic and I have to be nice to you throughout the remainder of it. That is so true. Yeah. You can't, they're like, people rip you apart if you're snarky and mean to me. Yeah. This is so great. Oh, this is wonderful. So we are going for our menu printouts? tasting. Oh. I've got printouts, um, more just for me to visualize because there's a lot of pages of options here, but we're doing our menu tasting in a couple of weeks. And so we have to give them our 10 options that we want to try. Okay. 
and um, we, I already put the down payment down and it's uh, you, myself. Wait, why do we put the down payment down for a- The tasting? For the, oh, for tasting. For Got tasting, it. yeah, Got yeah, yeah. Um, Cause I think this is about to be a gourmet menu. Love it's it. it's actually at, I, we, I think we talked about this already. The, I can't remember if we talked about this in in off the pod or on the pod, but it's at um, Malibu. It's at um, uh, uh, Cielo Farms. Oh, which was it. which was the wedding venue that we literally didn't even go to work because it was so insanely expensive. Right, right. But so I don't know if maybe there's like a shared kitchen situation now or maybe they're based from it's there. It's Cielo or is it Cielo? Uh, Cielo, Cielo. I asked a wedding planner because I was too scared yeah. to say it out loud because I was like, I'm for sure saying it. I would have been like Cielo. Yeah, Cielo. Cause we're like a lemon Cielo. Right. So anyway, Cielo for <laughs> That's spelled different. Anyway. <laughs> Um, one so more time actually, lemon Cielo. Lemon Cielo. Okay. We have to choose 10 things to try. Okay. Um, and I'm overwhelmed. We can pay to try more if we're really stuck on some things. So I've got two master documents here. I see that. I love that we're doing this. Did, this you, give, so did you bring fun. me one? No, 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 no. I think that that will be distracting. I think I just need you to be like, yes, no, yes, no type of situation. Ooh, I usually like to no, see it for myself. No, I just think that the, the ADHD today in you is flowing. And I think that we really need to just hone in on this and focus. <sighs> Um, okay, so they sent over like a master doc of okay. like the top. Who's they? Who's this proverbial they? The the caterer. Okay, got it. The caterer. So this is the proposal to, that they put together that's just kind of built off of like their top most popular things. Right. But then we have every single possible thing that we could put on the menu on okay. this one. No tomatoes. No tomatoes, of course, of course. Um, okay, so let's just, let's just, we can- Sauce on the side. We can just mark off things that we want to no try. Okay, pre-ceremony beverages. I don't want mustard. We're starting at raspberry lemon mint infused water and cucumber honeydew infused water. Raspberry lemon sounds delicious. I'm sorry, wait, so I, I'm picking one? I don't know, I'm not sure. This is, okay, and then we have tray pass champagne, love it. We have the ceremony cocktail reception. Okay, so here we go. We've got the appies, the appetizies, the hors d'oeuvres, the- <laughs> or, Hors d'oeuvres. The um, hours d'oeuvres. Ah. Yes. So we bone are apple tea. Bone apple teas. Okay. So select four of the following. We've got bra braised beef short rib okay. on a toast to Christine. Hold on. How many, how many options are there? Uh, there are one, two. Oh shit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can we choose four of those to actually pick. All right. Great. I wish I so had. So there's eight. I really wish I had a menu. There's eight options here, mm -hmm. but. We've got a bajillion more to choose from if nothing tickles our fancy. Okay, tickle me. Okay, here we go. Braised beef short rib on, I just feel like also this would be a great time to get a snack because we are about to be deep in food talk for the next like 15. Yeah. So if you don't have a snack and you're feeling a little peckish, a little hungry, right. now is the time. A Hungarian. Okay, braised beef short rib on the Toto Cristini with buttermilk mash, crispy Rockford cheese. Yeah, Rockford cheese? I want that. Um, braised beef short rib, I'm on the fence about. Okay. Pistachio crusted lamb chop with a rosemary. Wow, this is an, this is an appetizer? I, I'm okay on lamb chop. I love lamb chop. Do you love lamb chop? Okay, I'll put a heart next to it. That's not a good heart. Mini fried chicken sandwich with honey garlic slaw, black peppercorn aioli on a brioche. Sounds Southern. That sounds pretty good though. Are you hearting that one? No, I don't I, I don't love fried chicken sandwiches. Okay. I mean, I just had this conversation the other day. I forget who launched a new one, but I, I don't feel any kind of specific way about it. They a launched fried. a new fried chicken sandwich. I forget who which which chain the restaurant. Gall in 2023 be like, we're launching a, a yeah. chicken sandwich. Okay, mini chicken pot pie in a puff pastry tartlet. Okay. That sounds delicious. Okay. Ahi tuna tartar 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 Ahi <laughs> <laughs> tuna tartar taco on a crispy wonton tartar shell taco? with wasabi dressing and Napa cabbage slaw and some other stuff. Okay. There's a ton of other seafood options that I think you'll like better. Okay. So we'll go over to that afterwards. A mini main lobster salad, no salad. If it was a mini I, mini lobster. You, um, you had me till salad. Yeah, right till salad. I feel the same way. Burrata puff pastry tartlet. Couldn't want that less personally, but I know people love burrata. Okay, whipped ricotta on fresh fig with orange blossom honey and grilled crostini. <laughs> that's that's see, like none of those. That's none a of those very really, adult thing to yeah, eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel okay. So do they have chicken fingers and fries? Okay, so now we go over to. Well, do we do we make a decision? Yeah, we choose all of this. Well, well, so those are the eight that they put forward that are like, hey, these are really popular. But when I tell you that there are so many options here. Oh, okay. well, hold on. Before we get into that, do we have a top four? Today's 
episode is brought to you by Honey Love, the superhero of shapewear. Honey Love is the ultimate destination for all your shapewear needs, whether you're a bride, a guest, or simply looking for everyday comfort. Why waste your time squeezing into a medieval torture device when you have the option to effortlessly slide into something far more cozy and forgiving? You said it, sister. I am all about that shapewear life, truly. I, almost in every single going out outfit, I would say that I'm wearing some kind of shapewear and nothing boosts my confidence more than feeling comfortable in my outfit. Whether it's a super tight and flinky dress that flaunts every inch of the bod or a killer bodysuit that snatches me in all the right places, I am owning my style with confidence. So for Forget the struggle and embrace shapewear that's as effortlessly cool as you are. When talking about shapewear, Honey Love's best-selling Super Power Short is the go-to. It has targeted compression technology that distinguishes between areas where you want a little more support and areas you need less compression. Their signature X targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves. It's designed to work with your body, not against it. As a special treat for our valued listeners, enjoy our offer of 20% off your entire order using our exclusive link honeylove.com slash wild support our show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash wild well top we, five we didn't like any of those oh yeah, yeah yeah. i'm gonna read you some of my, my favorite ones that i think that you'll like as well too I, lord i'm really stressed here we're still on appetizers we I, haven't even gone to the, to know, the main i feel like we should start stack ranking these things of those eight yeah we don't want any of those though none of them well, maybe the the one that the crusted lamb chop, right? Oh, I, yeah, okay, all right, great, okay, yeah. I'm okay, in. I'm, I'm so glad everyone gets to experience this with me. <sighs> okay, so in the pork category alone, we've got like 12 options. The what category? The pork. I think it's the port. No, but like, listen to this, mini bacon, egg and cheese croissant breakfast style sandwich. Odd choice, but I'm interested. Like, I, I don't think that makes sense for an appetizer, but that does sound delicious. Okay, mini cornbread cake bite. Uh, oh, but it's got pulled pork on it. I don't want that. I'm sorry, cornbread <gasps> and, well, hold on, stop, stop. What? Cornbread and pulled pork? Yeah. This isn't a Southern wedding. That. Okay, listen to this one. A, a Serrano ham and Manchego cheese croquette. A little fancy, that's like a fancy ham and cheese if sandwich. If we're doing crotchets, I'm getting my pulled pork cornbread. Okay, fine, I'll heart that one for now. It, that sounds delicious. You think? Okay, what about, yes. it does Everyone also come with bread. red cabbage slaw though. Uh, that's on the side. Okay, well, it's an appetizer. So I don't think that, it's yeah. like it's like a tray pass out appetizer. Do they have like a, a kid's menu version of that? <laughs> don't worry, there are definitely some kid ones. Okay, well, I'm gonna heart the ham and cheese sandwich because that sounds delicious. Um, flatbread of pepperoni, mozzarella marinara and honey drizzle. I we mean, have to have that one, right? That couldn't be more up my alley. Yeah, that's the perfect one. Okay, I, there's I'm gonna about fully honey on circle pizza. that one that is so good. <laughs> Like I didn't realize that I wanted honey on pizza until I had it. Now oh, every man. time I have pizza and there's no, I'm like, where do you have honey? And they're like, what? Yeah, like to cut any kind of like spice too with a little bit of honey. Oh! So good, a little spicy pepperoni, but mm. I don't like spicy honey. I want my my pepperoni a little no, spicy. No pepperoni, a little spicy with it, honey. Yes, babe? exactly. Let's get married. Um, bacon deviled eggs, not for me, but I know people are really really into. No, that's gonna be too gassy. Yeah, no one wants to eat an egg at a no. wedding. Well, and if, if they do, they're not eating at my wedding. Um, honey garlic glazed barbecue pork bite with sesame seeds. That sounds pretty good. Okay, we're still in the pork category. We're huh? still, yeah, we haven't even moved over to the poultry category. I don't want to hear that it took me a long time to get these lights ready when it's, we've spent 19 minutes on pork. Okay, well, I'm not only making you content, but I'm also helping plan your wedding. Okay, moving on over to poultry. Um, blackened chicken skewer. That sounds kind of boring. Yeah, boo. Duck confit. Well, that's not, oh, I guess, I've always thought of poultry as just chicken, but I guess, yeah. Duck falls into that. That definitely falls into that. Both yeah. have beaks. Right. <laughs> um, right. Fried chicken. Sorry, is, that, is that what makes it a bird? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. And a, a beak. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, mini fried chicken sandwich. Mini fried chicken and waffle bite. Mini fried chicken bite on a biscuit. Fried chicken bite with a pancetta biscuit and hot honey drizzle. Lots of fried chicken options. Uh, can you imagine the day that like the chickens realized that like the humans got onto the whole yeah, idea of fried like, chicken? Oh, no. Like, oh fuck, I we're done. Know. Like they've moved six rungs down yeah. like the, the, the food chain. <gasps> Mini spicy chicken corn dog. Ah! It, okay. I'm gonna put a heart next to that one. That is more Southern than whatever we just talked about. <laughs> Ooh, sesame chicken pan fried wonton. That sounds good too. Very Asian. Flatbread, of, we only need one flatbread. Okay, we're still in poultry here. Honey and garlic fried chicken. Just so much fried chicken. 
uh, honey and garlic fried chicken bite. I don't know. I feel like we could do the. I don't. We don't need fried chicken at this point. No. Okay. We're moving on to the seafood. I don't really eat seafood. I eat shellfish. Oh, actually, but there's. Okay. So here we go. Um, mini ahu, <laughs> mini mm. ahi poke bowl, in wonton cup. Not for me. Not for you. Okay. Uh, tuna tartar taco, mini lump crab cake, bacon wrapped scallop bite. Oh. No, that could be interesting. Bacon wrapped scallop bite? That could be interesting. That sounds delicious. Yeah. I love a good scallop. I also love when you don't have to eat, just eat, like when you order scallops for a meal and you only get three of them. Right, it's, it's good for an appetizer. Yeah. It's not good it's for a perfect. meal. It's perfect, I totally agree. Uh, grilled prawn, that sounds pretty good. Prawns. Mini lobster, see, I wish it was a mini lobster like sandwich or something, or like a lobster grilled cheese. Oh! Nothing <laughs> says a light appetizer like <laughs> lobster grilled cheese. Uh, popcorn shrimp bite, that sounds good. Like what's a good appetizer mix for like, knowing that we have to be up for many more hours after yeah, this. Yeah, 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 I know. And like, we don't want people to be lethargic. Okay, so we've got ahi pokey, white fish ceviche bite, shrimp ceviche, mini ahu. <laughs> Why can I say ahu? I can't say ahi. Mini ahi tuna tartar taco. Uh, yeah, it's the tartar taco. Mini crab cake, harissa shrimp, mini hoisin glazed salmon bao. I love bao. Don't love salmon though. Um, tempura. Are you sure you're Asian? I know. Smoked salmon. A lot of fish. Yeah, the, the fish section is large. None of those, none of those really jump out at you. Didn't tickle my fancy. Okay, well, bacon wrapped scallop. That's yeah, that was big yeah, heart next amazing. to it. Yeah, that that sounds good. We have to pick four, right? What? We have like four, right? We have to pick four, but we have to narrow down ten things total across all categories to try on our menu tasting. Can we negotiate that? Yeah, well, we well we can pay extra. There's no negotiation oh, there. That's not yeah. negotiation. Okay, here's the vegetarian and vegan section. I know that you don't want to have this section, but we do need this section. Okay, um, fresh smashed avocado on a grilled crostini. That sounds delicious. I mean, if you're gonna go vegan or whatever, that's the one I wanted to do it. Yeah. Oh, but fried mac and cheese bite. I wonder what kind of, no. oh, okay. This must not all be vegan. That might just be vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, street style sauteed noodles. That sounds delicious. In a mini Chinese takeout box with chopsticks. That's adorable. Adore. But then people have to hang on to the chopsticks. Yeah, I feel like that's weird. too much. Yeah. Um, mini sweet corn fritter. Okay. A pretzel bite? Love pretzel Love bites. Love a pretzel bite. And it also comes with white cheddar cheese. Love that. Um, a mini ricotta pancake stack with blueberry compo with a maple syrup drizzle. Put it in, <laughs> put it in me. <laughs> that sounds delicious. But I feel like that's weird to have like a breakfast thing, right? It's not normal. Yeah. Uh, Beyond style, plant style, bait. Uh, whoa, that was not English. Mini Beyond style plant based slider. <laughs> uh -huh. Vegans. I love you, but I am not gonna have a Beyond Burger at my wedding. No, <laughs> we're not doing it. Um, okay, oh, grilled cheese bite with roasted tomato soup shooter. Ew. Oh, that sounds delicious. Tomato what? Tomato soup shooter. No, I don't do tomato soup. You don't do tomato soup? No, you know this. Yeah, but like, I, do, I feel like tomato soup falls in the same category as like marinara sauce. No. I don't no. know. No, would you dip a, a, a mozzarella stick into Tomato soup? Yeah, I totally would. Okay. I'm not saying that tomato soup equals- Marinara? Marinara, but I'm just saying it falls in the same family category. Like I don't like tomatoes, but I like marinara and I like tomato soup. I, until this exact moment, I hadn't even thought about the correlation between tomatoes and mozzarella, or tomatoes and-, and uh, Marinara? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that obviously it's there, but like to me, those are two completely different tastes. Okay, okay. Um, heirloom uh, bruschetta on a grilled crostini. People, people really fuck with bruschetta. I know we don't like I tomatoes. Love I know, bruschetta. but I know. But. Brisca, brisca Ooh, cheetos. Ooh, capre, caprese. <laughs> this is a, a travel food culture podcast. <laughs> caprese, limoncello. <laughs> caprese skewer of tomato, mozzarella, and fresh basil. I literally hate tomato and basil, but I do love a mozzarella ball. I mean, who doesn't? Oh my God. Okay, thank God. We're, we made it through, we made it through well, the appetizers. How many people that are coming to our wedding are gonna be lactose intolerant? Um, I would say a smallish percentage. Okay. Also, if you're not coming strapped to an event with lactate, that is your own goddamn responsibility. You are one of the only people I know who keeps that shit on her. Yeah, that is absolutely not true. And you, no, that's not true. I've never left the house with an ibuprofen, a lactate. Or That's because you have me who feeds you ibuprofen and gives you Pepto when your tummy hurts. Not out, not usually, not often. Next. 
Okay, so this, okay, so let's go back to the proposal of the things that they suggested. Okay. Um, so I feel like afterwards, maybe we do a roundup of all the things that we, we hearted because okay. even just from the appetizers, I'm feeling, I'm also just a little nervous that like our palette of items that we've chosen are not going to be the most complimentary, but that's okay because you're not gonna eat everything. I'm sorry. The only thing that has to be complimentary that day is us. Okay, I love it. On to the next one. Um, but maybe we should think about <laughs> yeah. making it complimentary. Uh, lavish cheese and charcuterie station. <gasps> okay. That sounds delicious. That could be one of those things that gets like, like neglected and picked, like not really given the, the time of day. I, I feel like. disagree. Okay. People fuck up our cheese and charcuterie at the engagement party. Okay. Everyone loves charcuterie. Okay. Um, I, did, I only had spicy bites of that thing. I literally didn't eat anything on the night of our, right. of our um, Yeah, you were on the big gusp of air diet. Yeah, I was on the, no, thank God I'd eaten a full dinner beforehand diet. Uh, okay, so then, oh, oh, I see. Okay, so I remember that we liked this caterer too as well too because they can provide full bar. So the Fat Cat uh, package is premium spirits with Belvedere vodka, Tito's, Remy, you're welcome, Bombay Sapphire Gin, uh, Lalo Blanco, Blanco tequila, Okay. There's a few other te tequilas and mezcals in here that I cannot pronounce. Uh, a rum, Buffalo Trace bourbon? Yeah. Is that a good one? It's fine. I've literally never heard of it before. It's good. Okay, Johnny Walker Black Scotch Whiskey, Aperol, Triple Sec, Dry Rum, Stella, a Modelo. I know you don't like Modelo. I'm sure we could do other things. Yeah. Um, champagne, Cafe de Paris. Hmm. Cafe de Paris. Yeah, I've okay. never heard of it before. Sounds like a, a champagne targeting Americans. Okay, so we move into dinner. We have house seasonal wait, breads. Wait, wait, was that the option? Um, no, we just decided that we wanted to do the premium um, bar. So this is just get, telling us what we've already kind of decided. Got it. Okay, and got by it. we, I mean I. Got it. Okay, so house seasonal breads, uh, grilled and brushed with olive oil and a plated salad. So we have to choose one of the salads. I oh, feel let's like, do bread, not salad. Next. <laughs> I think, so not an either or thing, but thank you for your contribution. Yeah, we should, we should save some money on that one. I think that we should not waste one of our 10 menu tasting things on a salad. I, when I tell you that if I never eat a salad for the rest of my life, <laughs> That'll be too many salads. <laughs> it has been four and a half years of dating and my my mom has finally accepted that she will not serve Jeremy's salad and just doesn't even ask anymore if he wants salad when There's she cooks dinner. There's few things in the world that I think I look forward to more as an adult than yeah. not being told what to eat. Okay, so we've got um, our plated salad options are the classic Caesar salad, which I feel like is a little heavy. Like I think there's something lighter that probably is better. Um, the avocado citrus salad. I just feel like you I hate all salad, so. Oh, I, if you want to just go ahead and skip past this part. Okay. Oh, there's a caprese salad. Oh, the caprese? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm surprised that's in the salad category. Caprese? But this avocado citrus salad sounds really good with avocado, spiced papitas, shaved manchego, orange segments, Papitas. Pickles, Fresno chili, and a citrus vinaigrette. I'm gonna hurt that There's just bitch. so many things that go into this. It's crazy. Like, I don't even know if that was all of the, we also could do a raw bar, a sushi bar, a wood fire pizza. I don't think we need this page. Okay, so <laughs> salads, nailed it. Moving into entrees, the most important part of the meal. I'm in, yeah. Okay, so here are the things that they've chosen, again, to put forward as their most popular dishes. But when I tell you that we have motherfucking options. Okay, uh, dry herb. Marinated <laughs> New York steak. <laughs> we definitely want to do a steak. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'll put a heart next to that one. Wait, wait what is it though? Dry, dry. Dry herb marinated New York steak. Okay. With a Bordelaise sauce. Oh, I don't want that. Okay. Yeah. But like, this is probably something that we should probably try, right? Okay. Slow braised beef short ribs in a red wine shallot marmalade. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds good. Uh, grilled Moroccan sea bass with a walnut pesto. You would hate that. I would hate that. But we have to have a fish option for oh, totally, the, yeah. the fishy, the fishy girls. Yeah. Grilled <laughs> Moroccan sea. Okay, so that pan seared halibut. Real, real quick, can we walk through all the fishy girls on the list? <laughs> I know Caleb Marshall's coming. Yeah, Who Caleb else? Marshall's coming. Yeah. Uh, pan seared halibut with green peppercorn sauce. It, what's your favorite fish? Salmon, probably. Salmon, yeah. Okay, I'm so a, I'm a sea bass, salmon you're guy. out. Halibut, you're out. I mean, no, sea I like bass, those. you're out. Butternut squash ravioli with brown butter and sage sounds like a motherfucking slaps. I think that's what like they serve on like the United flights. That's always bad. Okay, so this will be better. Yeah, no, definitely. But also mild. Whoa, I almost said mild, mu mild mushroom ravioli. <laughs> Wild mushroom ravioli with porcini shallot cream sauce. Washroom. Yeah, that sounds delicious. Okay. 
fucking love mushroom ravioli. I don't, yeah. I know, I know that's not for you. If you want to make me sound like a brat, read off a menu of items that has 600 things on it and yeah. have me say my, my true opinions on 597 of them. Okay, sweet risotto and sauteed corn. I mean, that's- I'm so underwhelmed by risotto. Underwhelmed by risotto. It's a little mushy for me. It's mushy. Yeah. Like the fact that that's a whole ass entree, absolutely the fuck not. No. That is a disgrace to an entree. Not for me. Okay, so moving over now to the sample menus. Okay, small bites, we're gonna come oh back God. for you. Holy motherfuck, there are so many salad options. We we will, I'll do that one on my own. Yeah, I, I just prefer to. Okay, here we go. So here are all the entree options. They have shaker salads, remember those? What are those shaker salad? Oh, it's a McDonald's treat, next. McDonald's had salad? <sighs> they had shaker salads. Wow. They You put the, you, you, you squeezed the dressing into them and then you shook the container. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I think you'll like this better. Okay, there's a garlic and thyme rubbed New York steak, again with the Bordelais sauce, but we can figure out what that is. Okay, yeah. But I like garlic and thyme better than just like dry herb. Yeah. Um, Dry rubbed grilled New York steak. Okay. Grilled flank steak, absolutely okay. not with chimichurri. chimichurri. No. I hate no, no, chimichurri. No, 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 no. Uh, iron, uh, grilled flat iron steak, no. Skirt steak, no. no. Uh, the short ribs, we already saw that. Soju braised short ribs. Okay. Seared ribeye with garlic herb butter. Okay. Sliced beef tenderloin, pepper, green peppercorn sauce. Ooh, that, oh, green peppercorn? Green peppercorn <sighs> sauce. There's, there's also a fee for that one. Same thing for this one, seared filet mignon with, caber, with cabernet demi glace. Upgrade fee. Demi glace? Yeah. And I know what that is, but do you, could you walk me through what you think that is? Um, um, sounds like maybe there's a little bit of sauce on it. Okay, got it. Question mark. <laughs> so anyway, so we can do an upgrade fee to do filet mignon if we want to do that over New York steak. But I think a New York steak is probably pretty good. Okay, moving on to seafood. Okay. Uh, miso glazed salmon. That sounds delicious. Okay. Even though I don't like salmon. Uh, sake and brown sugar baked salmon. Blackened salmon. Grilled snapper. Sauteed black cod. <laughs> Can I get a yes or a no? <laughs> I, I, these have been good, yeah. Okay, has anything stood out to you? Say this one more time. <laughs> Miso glazed salmon. Yeah. Sake and brown sugar baked salmon. Yeah. Blackened salmon. That could be good. Okay. Then what's what was the next one? Um, grilled snapper. No, uh, no. Okay, sauteed black cod. Uh, could be good. Sauteed with garlic herb butter. That could be good. Okay. That could be good, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, black garlic and miso glazed sea bass. Nah. Seared sea bass with blistered tomato, garlic, and no. herb relish. Nope. Seared sea bass with lemon burr, blah, blah, blah. Grilled Moroccan sea bass with walnut pesto. Read that one. Seared branzino, upgrade fee. And wow, branzino is a bougie fish. Yeah, no, but yeah, the zeno's definitely on the bougier side. Is it a better fish? What's, they used to call branzino a different name. Yeah. Did they rebrand her to be more expensive? I think they did. Shoshana, what was the original name? You're right. Um, Hank Green made a video about this. Lauren, like they did this with a bunch of fish. Really? They weren't that popular, so they put them through a rebrand, started calling them a new name, and they charged more for them. Oh my God, that's yeah, hilarious. Yeah, they Yeah, it's I'm like looking, Yellow Diamonds. I'm looking up what it was called. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, so Brands, you know, she got a rebrand and she's ex she is more expensive. There's also a pan seared halibut with green peppercorn sauce that is also at an upgrade fee, which you, is confusing. You lather something in green peppercorn. Might as well just make it anything. Yeah. Oh my God, it. you guys. Yes. It used to be called the Patagonia tooth fish. <laughs> That is why it couldn't sell. Okay, you know what? When I think about my fish having teeth, I also don't really want to eat it. And so I do understand Branzino is an upgrade from the Patagonian tooth fish or whatever it's called. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the ones that we've got starred, oh wait, no, oh God, we haven't even moved into poultry. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Pan roasted citrus chicken breast with lemon and thyme juice. I'm kind of bored by chicken breast, I'm gonna be honest. Like, would you rather do a pasta, mm -hmm. a, a, a beef and a fish? A, a pasta, beef and fish instead of chicken? Yeah. Sure. Okay, well, let's see if any of these really, really jump out of us. Seared chicken breast with sun-dried tomatoes, no. Seared chicken breast with lemon burr. See, like, I just feel like a chicken breast is like, mm, like whatever healthy, but like you can, buttermilk, fried chicken, no. <sighs> Like grilled chicken breast, bitch. No. Boring. We are celebrating. I'm not eating a chicken breast at my wedding. I will, I'll be coming off of um, nine months of just nothing but uh, chicken breasts. Right. So I'm gonna be, I'm good on that. Okay, so here's some of the other pastas. There's a vegan lasagna of seasonal vegetables. Absolutely not. Grilled cauliflower steak. Oh my Can God, do you remember- vegan friends to like bring their own food? When we went to a bougie event and there was, they brought out the cauliflower steak. 
And Jeremy was genuinely so offended by what was on his plate. I've, if you want to make everyone think that I'm a monster, let's continue <laughs> this. I just like, I like no, what I like. It's just so crazy. It's just so crazy that they just kind of like chop it and grill it. And they're like, here's, here's a steak. steak. Yeah, exactly. Like that, that really is a little unhinged if we're being honest. Yeah. It's, it's, well, I just wish they would call it something else. Yeah. It's not, yeah, yeah. It's not a steak. It's like it's coconut steak. bacon. That's coconut. Yeah. 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 Uh, linguine primavera with seasonal vegetables and marinara. That sounds okay. Who's, who like who like hears seasonal vegetables and goes, mm, I'm sure those are good. Yeah, yeah. I know, cause I'm like, whoa, what season? Okay, so <laughs> Probably the one you're in. we didn't love any of those and that's the end of it. Okay, wait, actually that was less overwhelming than I thought it was gonna be. So we've got it narrowed down. I'm not sure I've, I've ever been more confused about anything. Really? Yeah, the problem is like, I'm, I'm not like, indecisive when it comes to picking things for me. Yeah. But like picking things that for are gonna go people. well for others. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel know. like I'm not the chef. Okay, here's what we have hearted for our entrees. We've got the dry herb marinated New York steak, but if we like the garlic and thyme rub steak better. Mm -hmm. Right. So one of those two, butternut squash ravioli with brown butter and sage, that sounds delicious. Okay. Wild mushroom ravioli. So one of those two, one of the raviolis. And then we've got three fish chosen and you just choose from one of the fish. So you've got seared uh, blackened salmon and sauteed black cod. That was, those were two Sorry, apples. I had a, I got it mixed up with a filet mignon. It, well, I can have the filet mignon fish? No, 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 sorry. I got that mixed up in the beef category. I forgot about her. Okay. But I don't know if I want to pay to upgrade that, so. Well, let's look at the price difference <laughs> on that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I feel pretty good about that. About what? The, like how we narrowed that down. We've got two, we've got three beef situations to choose from, two pastas and two fishes. Are we done? For entrees? Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. I love the, what we chose. Yeah, me too. Okay, I feel good about that. Okay, sides. Love a good side. I haven't been this lost since sitting in like eighth grade geometry listening to people, <laughs> like the, the teacher talk about proofs. I love listening to food menu stuff. Um, creamy macaroni and cheese with black truffle. Okay. Oh, that sounds delicious. I mean. Charred Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. How many of these do we get? Uh, we choose two sides. Okay. Um, Palm puree with sweet cream. I don't even know what that is. No. Roasted broc broccolini. Yeah. Smashed fingerling potatoes with rosemary and garlic. That sounds pretty good. Okay. It's, it's a staple. So they're the ones, those are the ones that they put forward as their populars. We've also got roasted baby red potatoes, Yukon gold potato and celery root mash, roasted blah, 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 purple Peruvian potatoes. Wait, sorry, purple Peruvian potatoes? Yeah, say that. That PPP? For, yeah, that PPP, that triple P. Uh, polenta, saffron rice, uh, root vegetables, roasted charred Brussels sprouts with <gasps> maple and brown sugar. Bitch, I am circling that. Okay, all right. That's better than just with white balsamic. Yeah, no, I don't balsamic. I don't balsamic. Uh, tricolor carrots. Wait, there's three colors of carrots? Yeah. White, yellow, and what? Purple. Oh yeah. Well, I feel like those are, I would've thought those were potatoes. That's a carrot. The Peruvian potato. Yeah, no, no, no. Peruvian uh, potatoes and purple carrots are from different, yeah, they're different. Different families? Vegetables. Got it. It's both in the vegetable Cousins? category. Did you not know watch VeggieTales? Talk about Larry? <laughs> Talk about Bob the tomato? Larry the cucumber? Grilled asparagus. If no. you like, like to talk to tomatoes. tomatoes. Lauren didn't know that was about, um, well, Christianity, <laughs> which is the funniest part. She just thought they were just like watching a cartoon about I don't remember Vegetables. a single thing of religion put in that show. <laughs> That's how good it was. It was baked in oh my there. God. I know. I feel like I've been bamboozled. Yeah. Well, they get you. Okay. So I feel good about that. We can just do a veggie and a mac and cheese, right? Uh, yeah, I think or so. Or a potato. We could do a potato. I prefer my, my vegetables to be potatoes, <laughs> to be honest. Hmm. We probably should have something green on the plate, babe. Can we like do it? Oh, charred Brussels sprouts with maple and brown sugar sounds oh, amazing. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Can we put bacon on it? Maybe, probably. Can you add bacon? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. If we can add bacon, that'd be great. We probably can. Yeah. Um, and then we could choose either a potato or a creamy mac and cheese. I think black truffle, creamy mac and cheese, that sounds amazing. Can we add bacon to that? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can we just get a bacon station? <laughs> can you imagine, like, like, you know, like when like the waiter walks around, like, do you want like crushed yeah. pepper on that? Yeah. Like, you guys you want, want some bacon? Bacon, bacon, bacon bits? Ba bacon bits? If we had a bacon bits person, Oh, I'm sure, baby. I'm sure the the sky's the limit. I would marry you every year. I'm sure that there, so you could have a, a bacon bit. Yeah, an excuse just, to have a bacon yeah. bit person and not be judged. I saw this TikTok the other day of this <laughs> wedding who <laughs> had um they had a mashed potato bar. Uh, you have brought this up many a time, yeah. and like 
It's not that I'm against the mashed potato bar. I saw a second TikTok too. Am I the, the only thing. person who's not seen a mashed potato bar? Apparently. I've they seen had it. mashed potato little shooters that were in a little mini cup. And they're shot at tater before, but I'm interested. Oh, uh, me too. Okay, moving on to desserts. We have to choose three of the following. Um, individual tartlets. No. And so we then we have to choose one of, there's so many decisions. So you have to choose three of the following desserts and then you get one of the flavors. Okay. Okay, so in tartlets, we've got pecan, mm. pecan, mm. apple, mm. pumpkin, traditional cheesecake, key lime, lemon custard, mixed Wait, berry. pumpkin tart? Yeah. Okay. I forget, you like pumpkin pie, right? Yeah, but is that the same as, what's a tart? A tartlet is like a little mini one. That's, that's what tarts are? Yeah. Like a little, it. like a, it's like a, yeah, like a mini, mini one. Have I had a tart before? You've definitely eaten a tart before. Okay. Okay. Um, Icebox shots. I want to see a photo of these. I think these are like, it's okay. So butterscotch. Wait, icebox shot? Yeah. That, what? I don't know. So chocolate pot de creme with whipped cream, <laughs> fresh berries and whipped cream, liquid cheesecake with strawberries and graham cracker crumble or Oreo. Liquid cheesecake with strawberries and graham cracker crumble, whatever the fuck that is in an, I don't know what an icebox shot is, but that sounds fucking incredible. I gotta try it regardless. Yeah, we definitely want to try that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna underline the cheesecake one. I've never felt like I didn't know. I feel like there was a prerequisite. I sh there was like a 100 level class I did not take. Yeah. And I got put in 200 <laughs> and I'm Before starting. This and it's like, I am looking at the syllabus going, I fucked up. <laughs> Look at the couch with the papers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cookie bites. Okay, I'm prepared for this. I Go ahead. don't know if I can have a wedding without crumble being there. Let's keep going. Okay. Shortbread, fuck no. Chocolate chip, white chocolate and dried cherry, peanut Ugh. butter, fudge, sunflower seed. I do fuck with a snickerdoodle. I want to know who's looking at this list and goes, oh, sunflower seed, oh, love. Love. It's the, granola, <laughs> it's the granola moms of Brentwood. Yeah, sure. Um, oatmeal raisin. I, I'm good on cookie bites. No cookie bites. Okay. Okay. Other desserts on the uh, page. I think we have more options. Ah! Okay, here we go. Um, How many trees did you kill in the process of printing this out? Uh, 17. Okay. Cinnamon sugar rolled churro bites. I mean. Ooh, optional filled with Madagascar sweet cream. <laughs> flourless Stra chocolate tour with optional sea salt caramel drizzle. I, when I see flourless, all I'm, all I'm hearing is take the fun yeah. out of the, yeah. the thing. Just take it out. I've had some good flourless chocolate cakes. No, not one. But this is not the time for this. No, you got to fool me. I, if I read that it's flourless, mm -hmm. my 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 like my spidey senses are tingling. Yeah. I won't be able to I enjoy understand. it. Mini pavlova, which is I think like a, the- a Paloma? No, no, pavlova. I think it's like the little meringue puff thingy. Paprika? No. So we just won't do that. Okay. Um, that was covered, in the, that was covered in 100 class. Mini cupcakes. Love cupcakes. Mini glazed donut hole, which is a Timbit. I want to be very clear. Mm. Mini chocolate eclairs, mini macarons, seasonal fresh flute, flute flatter. <laughs> the old fresh flute flatter. <laughs> yes, the old, the old flesh flute flatter. Flesh, <laughs> <laughs> flesh flute flatter. <laughs> oh man, I really wish that I could watch my mom have to eat through a flesh, flesh flute. flute. <laughs> Flatter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we also have to think about if we have wedding cake, like we don't need mini cupcakes because there's gonna be wedding cake. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if we get to choose three things, um, I mean, I do love a churro bite. Yeah, no, keep it simple, keep it easy. A churro bite? Desserts should be fun. They should not be, yeah. like I think you should be able to eat a dessert ideally on the way to a dance floor. I think so too. Yeah. It's like a go thing. Yeah. Okay. Because once we get, like, once people have been sitting too long, we got to get them moving. Otherwise we lose them. So maybe a little tartlet, maybe a liquid cheesecake with strawberry and graham cracker crumble icebox shot. Okay. And then maybe a little churro action. Sign me up. That could be good. Like if I wasn't getting married, I'd still want to come to this wedding. No, me too. This menu sounds like it absolutely fucks. There, yeah. You lost me the tomato bruschetta thing, but yeah, I'm back. Oh, I missed one. Dessert bars. Okay. I just feel like a bar can be so hit and miss though. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Right, I was thinking it was like a rapper. And also imagine, imagine we went to the tasting and for all 10 things, we wanted to try all 10 dessert bar flavors and that's all we wanted. I mean, it's our wedding. Okay, uh, and then last up, because you can't have a wedding without like a late night snacko. I will always remember that pizza at Robin Lauren's oh wedding. Oh my God. Matt Mush in Lexington. <gasps> came through that. I mean, remember we just kept going back. That was fire. It was so, it was good. so good. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Okay, so we've got- uh, The churros 
at um, Zach, Zach and Maggie's, Maggie's was great. Yep. They yep. also had a whole taco bar as well, too. Did I not? Oh, they did. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. 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 Um, Wagyu beef slider. I'm sorry. That's that's on the menu for yeah. what? I wonder if we could have that in our appies. No, 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 no. If we have Wagyu beef sliders. Yeah. I'm almost down to take beef off the menu and put that at the end. So you want to not have steak for the entree. Yeah. And have beef sliders. They're mini though, I think. Well, I want to try them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll put a hard. We're not having sauce. Wagyu beef sliders for a main entree at our wedding. No, that's not an option. These you are mini. Uncultured swine. That, what the fuck? That's not even an option. This is one of the the mini the mini late night snacks. Right. 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 Okay. Classic grilled cheese bite again with the tomato oh. soup shooter. Wait. Tomato what? The sh the shooter. The soup shooter. Yeah. I, that sounds like what happens after you have some dairy. I love how we've chosen already a lot of these late night things as like parts of like the actual yeah, meal. No. Can we? Like, the next one is is pepperoni flatbread love and that. fried mac and cheese love bite. That. <laughs> No, 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 our palate is best served after 11. You know, like the late night menu? Yeah. That's where we really shine. Oh, here's oh, here's the other option here for the late night menu. I was out with somebody one time when they ordered a Caesar for a late night. Salad? Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. No, no, no I was like, what? That's like a little, that's a red flag. Oh, I don't. That's an absolute I, red last flag. Last time I saw that person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, quesadilla bite, mini Love. beef meatball. There's not been one thing on this late night menu that I wouldn't devour. You just want this whole menu here, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, mini Wagyu beef bao. I love that. Classic beef tartare. Love that. Do you think that they save some of the more expensive things for the end of the night when some people are gone and eat less? Maybe. Cause I feel like people are starving when the appetizer wait, starts wait, wait, circling. Wait. People are gonna leave early? What? Our wedding? I'm mostly thinking of our, of our 80 year old neighbors who might come. Uh, I think Rona will be out on the dance floor until three in the morning. You're right, Rona's gonna fuck up the dance yeah. floor, you're so right. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, see, we, we like see her in the bathroom, like like just cutting up lines with our, no, our, our youngest no, friends. No, there will not be cocaine at our wedding. California beef slider with caramelized, caramelized jalapeno. Caramelized. Guacamole, Monterey Jack and a brioche bun. That sounds good too. Love brioche. Steak and eggs of seared hanger steak with a St fried nah, quail nah, egg. No, 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 no. Uh, a stank skewer. So it's a stank skewer? A steak skewer. <laughs> a steak skewer. A mini Reuben sandwich. Can we rename some of these? Fuck. To make them like cute, like- um, Like flesh flute flat platter? Yeah, like the, <laughs> like the flesh flute. No, um, like uh, we like make them a little personal. Like, yeah. Like if it was like an egg dish, like we call it like the- The, the like, like the Diggy Sunrise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Lamb and eggplant dome. skewer. That There's nothing I want less. With an a side skewer? of lavender honey. Sounds like what we're gonna do later, babe. Anyway. Am I the lamb and you're the eggplant? <laughs> well, I'm sure it's all about the lamb. <laughs> uh, a lamb meatball. I think there might have been another page, but I lost it. But anyways, I feel good about, no, those pages are done. Okay. How do you feel? Oh, I feel like I've decided everything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to go. You feel good? Yeah, let's do the wedding. Okay. I feel wedding's well. back on. Wedding's We're back in. on. Great. Okay. Amazing. Oh shit, I lost a lid, fuck. And listen, here's the deal. It's not that I don't want to participate in our wedding process and the planning process. I do. I don't necessarily feel like my contributions. So the contribution that I need from you is I need to know who you're inviting. Oh, okay. I literally cannot do this portion of the wedding. <laughs> I need your Did guest you list. list. I need your guest list. Did you look through my Instagram? I'm not kidding. I literally have names written down being like, do you want to invite this person? Do you want to invite this person? Do you? And then I need you to also reach out to those people and get their addresses for save the dates. <sighs> and I, I know that's like, a lot of lift. There's like four people coming then. Th that's fine, that's fine. Whatever whatever you need to, to make that happen, I need to get this line item done though because the save the dates are going out next week. And I and if your people mm. want to save the date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I, unfortunately, I don't think what you're asking for is unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much in seeing the validity in my concern. You know, like I'm, I'm hearing you, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm understanding right. you. And on, Sadly, I'm kind of taking your side on, on this more than mine. Sure, sure, sure. Despite the fact that I yeah. still mm -hmm. wish that I could just two weeks before just start just rapid testing people and be like, hey, yeah. by the way, did you want to come to town for, you're out, no right. worries, moving on. Right, 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 so right. I'm gonna do it. Okay, right, I, I need you to, yes. Uh, and and it's, it's gonna happen. Anyways, that concludes Wedding Planning Live. Um, I'm so glad that you all could join us and now you've gotten a very, well, I was gonna say a clear view into what our menu's gonna look like, but I don't know. I, I we want feel- We want to try. Are we gonna vlog the tasting? Yeah, of course we're gonna vlog the tasting. Great. That's so fun. I, I'm excited. That is so fun. Should I vlog the tasting? I can't wait to go where? What? What? Oh, I have my Vimeo channel. Your Vimeo <laughs> channel, yes, of course. Can you, what, Vimeo what if you like found a Vimeo channel that I was religiously posted? I was a daily Vimeo vlogger <laughs> <laughs> and they were all just movies. And so where were you syndicating your Vimeo videos to? Oh, it, 
I just up to, to private channel. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's a, well, it's like a pay per view, but nobody pays. I'd be like, is this what the fuck you're doing instead of inviting guests to our wedding? Yeah. <laughs> you're making Vimeo. Yeah. What if it was like my little like a uh, like life journal? Babe, I love that journey for you as long as you can get me the addresses of the family members you would like to invite to the wedding. Isn't it like, <laughs> d- like don't you hear stories about somebody who like you know did a little journaling every day for forty years yeah. straight? Like, there's that app that I always at the beginning of every year I'm like I'm gonna stick with this where you literally take one photo a day and at the end of the year it makes you like a, a little right. montage or whatever. I don't want that. There's no world. I think I maybe stuck around for about six days. Yeah, but like you also document yourself quite often. So it's almost like that's an extra layer. Yeah. Yeah. I watched Bubbies get his first bath the other day. (gasps) Really? Yeah. And? Yeah, it was just adorable. Wait, how did you, were you there? What? Or were you giving him the bath? I was giving him the bath. Okay, got it. I was like, you like, you like dropped the dog off to get a bag and you just stood there and they were like, but you can come back oh, an no, hour no, no. or two. It was in my kitchen sink. I can also see you being like, oh, I'll stay. No, it's a, I'll stay. I'll stay. It's okay. I'll I've stay. got time. I'll stay. Uh, it could be like hours. No, I'll stay. no problem. That's okay. I'll watch other I'll dogs get washed. I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your um, patience for uh, moose in particular is- uh, Quite high. Yeah. One of a mother's. Only a mother's. One of a mother's. Only a mother's. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna compile all this and then I'm going to make some key decisions Put for us. notion for us. You don't check the shared notion. I'm not gonna put it in the notion. Okay, don't put it in the notion, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You wanna put it in the confluence? Did last thing? Actually, if you make a Jira ticket for this, it'd be great. Oh God. Anyways, I'm so excited for our menu tasting. It's gonna be great. We actually might be doing our, there. there's definitely a solo app scheduled, I think for the day. So we, should we do the episode while we're doing the tasting? That would be so fun, except for way too much chewing. Way, way, way too much chewing for an episode. Yeah, that could be tough for people who have like a, an, an aversion to that. Yeah. And I'm one of them. That's not great. That's yeah. not great. The only chewing that's allowed is from a dog. Um, so we have some hotline submissions. I know it's been like I a solid five weeks. I, I know. Remember the last time you got diagnosed as dyslexic? As dyslexic? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was it's funny been as hell. It's that been, it's like been that really was good. one of the funnier that, moments. That, that is the highlight of the Well Tonight hotline, I'm pretty sure. Let's do it. Whether you're searching for the latest sneaker drop, that iconic handbag, a timeless watch, or your next piece of classic jewelry, eBay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase. We're talking each inch, stitch, tick, facet, and clasp that make the piece you're searching for worthy of your collection. eBay's authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs, and as leaders in their fields, they're making sure your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead, get the piece that you've always wanted and leave it up to the meticulous eye of an eBay authenticator to make sure that the watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made of genuine leather. And never get faked over again. In a world full of fakes, it's time to get real with eBay authenticity guarantee. Everyone deserves real. Visit ebay.com for terms. Ready to ditch the usual car services and swipe right on something different? Let's talk about Turo. Think of it as the Tinder for cars, but without the awkward small talk or unsolicited eggplant emojis, Turo is here to redefine the way you think about booking a car. Say see ya to the old way of doing things and hello to a world of options right at your fingertips. Ready for that road trip you and your friends have been planning? Got a special event or working with a budget? Well, Turo has you covered. With Turo, you can book space Spacious SUVs and minivans show up to a classic or luxury car that screams, I've arrived, or find an affordable economy car that will simply get you from point A to B. I recently just got a new Tesla and luckily because Jeremy already owns one, I was able to test it out and see if I really wanted it or not. Turo is like a taste test for cars. Many Turo hosts will even deliver the car right to you. No trekking across town, no lines, no hassle. Whether you're in the US, the UK, Canada, or Australia, remember, Turo's got your back. Every trip is backed by liability insurance, terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive, forget boring rental cars at Turo.com. Hey, Lauren and Jeremy. My name is Ella and I need your help and advice. I've had this friends with benefits situation kind of deal with this guy for around three months now. We met in a really weird way. I used to work at his brother's restaurant and became close friends with him and his partner. They trust me and ask me to babysit for their two children from time to time. 
I was looking after the children and my situation ship, let's call him James, came home from work. Side note, James was staying with his brother and his family at the time. Oh. He was new to town and was still trying to find his own place. James helped me put the kids to bed and we ended up talking for hours, then ended up sleeping with each other. <gasps> We've seen each other at least once a week since that night. The last couple of times he started giving me gifts such as my favourite drinks or chocolates and other little things like that. Oh. One problem is he's terrible at communication. <laughs> Sometimes he replies within minutes and other times he takes like six days. Jesus. We also only see each other at night and when it suits him. To be fair, mm. James works from five to uh, works five to six days a week, roughly, okay. from 7 a.m. to anywhere between 5 and 8 p.m. as a scaffolder, which is oh. very physical work. Also, he has his own online business where he sells products he's made. Me, on the other hand, I work from 7 a.m. till around 3 p.m. at a cafe, so I have a lot more free time than he mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. Another big thing is that he's 26 and I'm 18, so I don't know if I should try ask for more, as in like a relationship or anything like that, or if I should just leave it as it is. Please help me. <laughs> also, Lauren, I love your Moose and Diggy tattoo, and I'm planning on getting one similar with my two doggies because... They're my life, and I love them, and I want them with me permanently, no matter what happens to them. As you should. So, yes. Um, any advice on my situation? Would love it. Thank you. <laughs> I'll start. Go ahead. First off, I don't know if everyone knows this, but you can get the lifetime guarantee on your pups, and then they'll, they'll just be with you forever. It's called the tattoo. We got that. The t- t- yeah. tattoo package. Um, what a well-spoken 18-year-old. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I don't know uh, what's in the water in New Zealand. Or Australia? Australia? I don't know. But I I was like, just the thought, like the thought that's going through, like, oh, he has less spare time. He's doing this. I work over here. It's like the things that I like, got 18 that have been like. Also like very concise with the information. Yo, she like yeah. got They're right like, here are the it. bullet points. Here are yeah. the facts. It's like, I've thought through this before I started speaking, which is something that I don't think I've ever done. Yeah. Well, cause like also specifically, like first when she says he's a scaffolder or sorry, yeah. no, no. First she says, we only see each other at night when it suits so him. him. Yeah, but, but then, then yes. he works five to six days a week yeah. and works until almost nighttime right. sometimes. So and it's like- has another gig too. Right, exactly. So also pretty cool. Like a, 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 like a working during the day, having your own thing. But also busy. Yeah. I mean, I think my first question, like the only one thing that I think this submission is missing is like, what does she want? That's That was exactly where I left it. Yeah, out. what does so, she want? Uh, we don't know what she wants, mm-hmm. but we know that she wants something. She's not be fulfilled currently with where, where things right. are at. Okay, so let's assume that she wants a relationship because yeah. I think that there wouldn't be a submission in she the asked, first place. She asked like, if, a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly, so exactly. We'll, we'll assume that's the case, but that mm-hmm. might not be the case. Right. Uh, I think we, and the other thing that's missing is, did we get a picture of the dogs? Oh, did we get a, did we get a picture of the dogs? That, that'll that be like my next lurk. Yeah, so the process. Th- that yeah. part we could also yeah. use as well. Right, and and right. when you reference dogs with the hotline, you should send dogs. Please attach too. a photo. Yeah, yeah. Please. It's rude not to. <laughs> uh, and if you want to send it's an album. the fee. Yeah, the yeah, fee yeah. The for fee our is, advice, for our mediocre advice. And if you don't advice. have a dog, get one. And if you're in the process of getting a dog, it's not there, just borrow somebody else's. Okay, Perfect. relationship, go ahead. Um, I mean, I think that he is demonstrating that he is interested. I think it's, it's, tough. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt because yeah. he obviously sounds busy as shit and like actually busy. Like when you work a manual labor job like that for that many no hours, joke. yeah, that's no joke. And so like, it's like building things like on the side of the building. Scaffolding. Like, and then like you put the thing up on the side of like a, a like a construction project. Oh, is that what it is? And yeah. then like, yep. and then, the, yeah. then like that very secure structure is what people like stand and work on. I thought, I always thought it was like the bones of a house. <laughs> I, high chance that I'm wrong. Anyways, I think that he is obviously very busy and occupied with his own career, but it sounds like he's putting gestures forward yeah. that he is interested. The little the little gifts and stuff. That's not like a, a oh, we're just hooking up and yeah, I don't care. Right, because obviously he's listening to your interests and knows your favorite chocolate bar enough to know that it is your favorite and right. to show up with it as like a surprise gift or whatever. And I wonder if like the chocolates and the things are coming after the six days that he's not responding or if they're- Right, right, right. If it's a, I'm so sorry that I yeah. was a shitty with my which phone. Was, which would be- I guess to me, there's ingredients here mm-hmm. for a dish that, that could be- uh, Successful. Worth eating. Yeah, I agree. But there's also some ingredients or some potential- How do you feel about the age gap? 
18 to 26 is, well, she sounds like she is willing to put her own mindset or has a mindset that's, I think, a little bit more mature than the average 18 year old. I think that because he just moved here and lives with the brother and they met organically and he doesn't have like a network of friends yeah. that he already knows, I think the age gap is okay. Agreed. To me, when I was 26, I'm trying to think. I mean, you wouldn't have been dating an 18 year old when you were 26. So when I was, I'm trying to think of like what my dating app filter was. I think when I started, when I was 25 or 26, last time I was single. Mm -hmm. 25 or 26, how old was I? I don't know. 26? I think 26. I think it was 26 last time I was single. Yeah. And I believe that I started my filters out at 21 and then continued to increase it only because of a bad, bad experiences. Right, 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 right. 18 to 26, and I don't know what the drinking age, and I don't know like the partying age, and I, I don't know if like- things, I think I feel like things start earlier in Australia, and I don't know anything about New Zealand. I think it's New Zealand, right? Is, it, is she New Zealand? Is that a New Zealand accent? I don't know. I feel like it felt more Kiwi. I don't I have know. No, I have no info on my side. Okay. Um, <laughs> we could just hack her IP and like in reverse. Uh, no, I would, I would imagine that, like to me, right? If the things that they're doing aren't able to be like, like if he's having to like, well, we can't go to these bars, whatever else, like that would play a contributing factor personally. Yeah. But that might not be the case. I right. don't know. My my gut feeling is that if she were to ask for more, a very natural response that I would not be surprised by is that I don't have time to like have a full commitment. I don't live, like I, I'm currently living with my brother who has a kid, you know what I mean? Like he's obviously in a very temporary housing setup. Right. Um, he's juggling two jobs right now and he just moved here. Like I think that if she is satisfied with where things at and are interested in just like continuing it, I think that there's no harm in that. I think it's just that, and also too, like, like a, a, a conversation about what the intentions are is not right. something that's bad. Well, and if they're not um, exclusive or if they haven't had that conversation or if right. she thinks it's appropriate for her to have other conversations with people she might be interested in otherwise, mm -hmm. it might not be a bad idea to explore those and see if she finds herself missing this guy versus not actually missing him at all. Right. Because like at a certain point, like, do you want someone or anyone or do you want a specific person? Mm -hmm. Or are you looking like, so like, I think to a degree when you're, especially when you're 18, it's like, you've got all the options and time in the world. Totally. So like, if you don't feel confident that the answer you're going to get from this guy is going to be one that you like, and maybe you, maybe you're still willing like to, to risk that because you want an answer. I also don't think it's necessarily the end of the world to keep your options open. Mm -hmm. If you feel like, there's a chance that you even bringing it up is going to veer it off course. And okay. there's nothing that makes a guy want to commit more than when he feels like the girl has other options. Right, exactly, exactly. Okay, so if she wants a relationship, they should have a conversation about intentions, question mark? Uh, it's never bad to have communication. Yeah, okay. But, and but if she the, doesn't want a relationship, she should keep her options open. Yeah, if, she, like, if she's not like, if all she wants is a relationship yeah. and she wants commitment and she wants monogamy and like, that's the thing that like she values more than anything else. Right. Well, then have a conversation. Yeah. But if that's not like the only outcome that she's interested in, mm -hmm. I would keep whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Open without closing other doors. Go forth. And just see what happens. It doesn't, doesn't sound like there's like a, a, he just moved there. It's not like mm -hmm. he's like about to move away. Right, right, right. They're like, yeah, you have time. Life is long. And you're only 18. Not. Yeah. You got you got your whole life ahead of you, kid. No, I just like she seems like she's uh she's thinking about all the right things. And like, if you were to ask this guy, how would you do it? Actually, I know how you would do it. <laughs> but go ahead, say it. <laughs> how would I do it? Uh, um, one. Well, I, I, you know what? I don't even think this exercise applies because I don't know what she wants, and so right. I can't I can't emulate that right. that energy because I don't even know what the energy is. Right. I think like trying to read his mind is a bad idea, mm -hmm. and simply just like conversation. Yeah. But also just keeping your own priorities mm -hmm. in line. Don't don't sacrifice what you want to guess what you think he might want or doesn't want. Agree? Yeah. Next caller. Broccolini. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Jeremy. Been a big fan of you guys since day one. Anyway, I need help with a friendship situation. I've been friends with this person 
since my junior year of high school. And now it's been on and off for 15 years. But Long time. I'm having issues with her not communicating with me. Sometimes when she's stressed, she likes to be in her own bubble. Um, she doesn't want to talk to me of what's going on, um, helping her relieve her stress or let her just talk and have it. She's having issues with baby daddy drama. Mm. And um, I've always been there for her, but yet I feel like she is not here for me. Currently, I am pregnant and my boyfriend and I were hosting a gender revealing party and she said she was going to come. And when the party came, she never showed up. She <laughs> never texted me the reason why she didn't show up. And oh. that's what hurts me the most is she didn't give me a reason why. She yeah. just left me hanging. And I'm getting tired of her leaving me hanging and not communicating with me at all when she's in a stressful situation. When when I'm stressed, I like to have someone there so I can vent or ask them questions or advice. Yeah. And I'm tired of it. And I want to know if I still should still be friends with her or just have her be my boyfriend's friend's girlfriend. Hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. Fuck. I mean, damn. I like that. That sucks so much. She just like was a no show. Like I think about if one of my friends just bailed on something as big and like sentimental and huge of a moment. I mean, like, that's like a things, life moment, a gender things. reveal. That's like a like a baby shower. You know what I mean? Like that's huge. That's so upsetting. First off, congrats on having oh, uh, yeah, congratulations on a, having a little a, bebe. a little bebe. Um, that's exciting. This sounds like a wildly one sided friendship. Well, that's the thing. It's like I, I, I. Well, we feel differently about these things. Go ahead. I mean, I, I just think that like when a, a friendship is a relationship, right? It's like yeah. you are communicating and you are supporting yeah. and you're showing up for your friend. And it sounds like, it sounds like this is a very one-sided relationship. And I understand that there are people who, when they go through stressful times, shut down and feel the added pressure, added stress of feeling like they need to update other people or that they need to tell other people what's going on yep. and that they seek comfort not from, you know, venting. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a love language, but yep. I guess like a communication and like stress language, I guess, would be a comparison. Remember the line in that show we used to watch um, with uh, uh, Jason Seagal, who's uh, the guy was like, you don't get to dictate how other people grieve. Yeah. It's like, you don't get to dictate how other people- Stress. Deal with their stress. Yeah. Yeah, right. right, right, right. So it's like, but I think on the flip side of that is that like, if she's going through shit, I think it's okay if she needs to shut down and like be in her bubble. Yep. But I think with the key factor of it being that like, it would be very helpful for you guys to have that conversation of you to both under understand each other's stress styles and what you need from a friend in return and what you're looking for to feel yep. supported. I mean, even beyond that, it's like when this person said they were going to come, to your yeah. baby shower? Mm. She, I didn't make that up, right? She, she confirmed she's gonna be there? Yeah, she said she'd be there. Let's just start, like, to me, I didn't just start right there. Like, yeah, 100%. Because the way, it's not even like, hey, um, uh, I wish you, like, it was hey, like, what happened? Mm -hmm. Like, where, where were you? Like, right. where are you okay? I think it's also a super fair question. Yeah. Like, because like when someone RSVPs for something, especially, you know, for any kind of event that you're hosting and you're putting on, like can use that, you justice. buy food and you buy drinks for a certain headcount that but you it, are expecting, just like beyond, respect. Yeah, but even beyond that, it's just like, there are a few things that if you're still friends with somebody 15 years later, yeah, the right. amount of versions of yourself you've gone through in 15 mm -hmm. years are like night and day. Mm -hmm. And if the, the current versions aren't gonna be friends anymore, okay, that sucks, but like say something or don't say you're going to the first place. Like, right. that's, like you would suck that the friend of 15 years isn't gonna be there, but it really sucks if they say they're going to be there and then they don't show, show up. Like yeah. to me, that's an even bigger, like them not being there sucks, mm -hmm. awful. But there's a world where whatever happened or came up makes that more okay. The gender reveal yeah. is only gonna happen one time for this baby. And it's just like, there's, 
a world where, because you guys have 15 years of, 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 of history, if something came up that was so monumental and so unavoidable, they mm -hmm. weren't able to be there, I, I would want to say that. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. I think, I think the priority here is to have a conversation about, I think, I think this is a perfect opportunity as well too, to use this example yeah. as a bigger line. conversation yep. as well too, for your overall communication within the friendship. Yep. I think something that is doable on her side is to let go of the expectation of wanting to have the friend vent to her. Because right. I think that that's probably just yep. not natural. It sounds like the friend is just not interested in that and that's not helpful for the yep. friend. And I think that is something that is doable on her side to just like let go of. Right. But I think the priority should be to have a conversation starting with just bailing on something so important and a life event like that. Also, if I expected one of my best friends to be there, because I can't imagine them missing it and yeah. they don't show, are you okay? I'd be like, you better be What's dead. What's going on? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, what, what the like, fuck? I'm sure something came up. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just, there's just, to your point, I think trying to um, even like approach the topic of like, I wish you would let me in more isn't going to be helpful because right. at this age, I feel like we're all starting to like become very I, much our way. I think it's, I think it's just as helpful to be like, if you ever want to talk, you know that I'm here right? and but, just leave it at that. But on the flip side, I just want to understand like from you, like mm -hmm. wh why you weren't there. And if, if that's, if there's a reason beyond it, if you're upset with me or whatever, like I want one, I want to know, but also two, like if you just don't value or respect our friendship anymore, that sucks. But I want to know that too. For sure. Because then she can be in on that decision as well too, to right. stop putting effort in. Totally. Yeah. Next caller. Hi, Lauren and fiance, Jeremy. Uh, I just wanted to get your opinion on something that's not necessarily an issue in my life, but I think about it a lot. I have been with my partner now for eight and a half years. I'm 26 and we've, you know, we've been through it. We've gone through ups and downs and there's been moments in the relationship where I think maybe we would have been better off breaking up but we stuck it out and we're, don't get me wrong, we're more in love now than I think we ever have been. And I'm truly grateful that I did stick it out, even though sometimes I think to myself, maybe what would my life be like had in those dark, dark moments, I pulled the trigger and left this relationship or vice versa if he did it when he was unhappy because we've been very unhappy. And I think that maybe I would have been in a totally po different position, I would have been happier uh, potentially, but that doesn't mean that I'm not happy now. And so I just wanted to get your opinion on, in terms of that whole mindset of stick it out. I know back in the day, the whole thing was like, you know, you, you keep working at it, no matter how hard it gets, you don't give up, keep trying. And that's why divorce rates were lower in theory. And that now, because people are not willing to settle, they're not willing to compromise, they're more likely to end a relationship when they hit hurdles. So where do you stand in terms of sticking it out, sticking through things? Uh, even when you hurt each other, when do you know it's the point of no return? And how do you know whether or not you're pulling that trigger too early um, and that you're ruining your chance at something really good and growing together because you're not willing um, to settle through some dark times. Yeah, let me know what you think. Lauren's got a great answer for this. I do? Yeah, you're gonna be, it's gonna be great. What, I have a good answer for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, fuck. I mean, I just think that it's so situational. Please don't punch me. <laughs> No, but it, it's, I, I think that her awareness of, of the situation and like the reality of like how rational, she just has such a good grip of like the reality, I think of like hard times and relationships right. and so stuff. It's not even like, it's like, tell me how, what I should do. It's like, I've done the thing that I, yeah. you know, I'm, I've been on both sides of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it's been like, anytime there's been a really hard time, like there's been dark times, but if you're able to grow from it and come out stronger together, but like, I just do feel like there's boundaries and limits to that too. You know what I mean? And again, that's down to a personal level. Like yeah. you hear of some couples working out after someone's cheated and they've been able to get through that. I'm just thinking of like the most stereotypical, like quote unquote dark time, you know I what I mean? I saw the other day, like a guy that I've known was cheated on by I think his wife, two if not three times mm -hmm. 
like all and like found out one found out again found out again and last time like he and i were in the same room i thought for sure that was over and they're still and it's been 10 12 15 years but like maybe happier he, than, maybe no, no, he, happier than and ever happier than ever yes okay yeah okay yeah Damn. But, but then see, of course, like, you know, the other side where it's like, you got to leave them. You yeah, got to. Yeah. 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 Like, see, like that couldn't be me if someone cheated on me. Like I yeah. just, I don't think that there's a world where that level of darkness or whatever, I could be like, we can get through this together and be stronger and happier. Right. But I think for her, like the most important thing is that she is happy now and she sees a future with this person and they've learned and picked up skills along the way, like interrelationish, interrelational. Is that a word? Am I making that up? Interdependent, inter interrelation, inter interrelation, inter interrelational, internally shit? relationships. Like if they've grown as a couple and learned new skills on how to problem solve and communicate through those dark times. And it's not a hurt and a trauma that also lies deep within their relationship and is still present now. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, if someone hurts you years back and you're not able, and it still feels very present and still very like a, a present wound, yeah. I think that that's difficult, but it sounds like she's happy and they're good now. Well, I think she's probably a good example of why sticking it out can be. Can work, for, yeah. But you, the thing that you said that uh, like resonates with me is, can you see a future with them? Right. And I think a lot of people are like, are get into the, the, the space of, everything is so bad and I just don't see a way out of this. Right, 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 right. Versus everything is terrible, but I know we'll figure it out. Right. And you are the only person who can make that call mm -hmm. and you're not always gonna make the right call. But some people, I, I genuinely, like they don't, I don't think they see a path forward and they, they just keep taking it anyway mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to move forward, but I know that they, have the capacity to be the person that I do want to be with. Therefore, it's will I'm willing to sacrifice my current um, state of mind for what we can have in the future. Yes. Right. I also just talked myself in circles in my own head right now because, okay, so on one side, I was like, I think in the past when I've been in relationships where I felt like it was just like bad, 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 bad. As soon as things felt okay, I was living on a very day-to-day -day basis of being like, oh, like it was bad last week, but now today's really good. And I think it also comes from a place of me being very non-confrontational and um, avoidant of conflict as well right. too, that like I would avoid scaling out and looking at the big picture of being like, like, could this work out in the future? Like, am I going to be going back and forth between like good and bad days all the time yeah. for the rest of my life? Which also is not like a happy way or a, a, a healthy way to exist either. Oh, no, that's that's awful. That yeah. literally is awful. But I also don't want someone to listen to that and be like, and, and like think about, oh, but they're gonna make a great father to my kids and let that idea of like a brighter future blind them from things that are happening now that they shouldn't be putting up with or shouldn't be uh, settling for. Yeah, I mean, so, I think it's, it's, it, there's, it's a balance. It's a balance and that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's so hard. It's like, you have to understand your own personal boundaries and like what makes sense for you and what makes sense for your relationship and the communication and, oh my God. Well, yeah, but like also, like, if you are starting to become complacent in the like dreams and visions you have with them in the future because you just don't think that they have the, the potential or capability to be the thing that you right. need them to be. Yeah, That's when it starts to be like more worrisome for me. It's like, if you're already kind of going, well, they're never gonna be this. And that's something that I want, it's really important to me. But like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find that anyway. It's like, well, uh, at a certain point, I understand that. Right. But like, if you don't have kids and you're not married and it's only been a couple of years mm -hmm. or it's been a long time and you've committed a lot of time to it, just because you've put a lot of time into something does not mean you should continue to put time into something. A hundred percent. I was just about to say that. Like I, I know girls, you know, in university who had been with their high school boyfriend for eight years. Yeah. And they're like, well, like we've just been through so much together. We've been together for so long. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But he cheated on you six times. Like just because you've got eight years under your belt doesn't mean that like you, it gives him a pass to do right. fucked up stuff. Like right. that's just not what that means. Yeah. So, I mean, like it's very situational. Don't get me wrong. It is. But you, you have to think to yourself, like, do I see myself with this person? And is the version of them that mm -hmm. I know that they either are or have the potential to be, is that something that's worth this current bullshit for? Mm -hmm. Cause if the answer is not a resounding yes. Like if, mm -hmm. if you can't look at your partner and go, no, I know they have the, like they have the capabilities and the potential to be the person who I thought they were and like can be, mm -hmm. if you're already starting to like, just take fucking checks out of that, yeah, I'd personally be thinking, okay, I think I can do better. Mm -hmm. But it's hard. It's very hard. It's hard. <sighs> I'm gonna I'm gonna stamp a situational situational sticker. We still need to make one. situational merch. I know. Yeah. I know. And a situation ship. Maybe it'll be the fall, the fall drop. 
Yeah. That'll be the fault. If you wanted to, we would. Um, anyways, thank you so much for your Wild Tonight hotline submissions. As always, the email will be in the description box. Will it be? Yeah. Okay. It's it's a it's a, I made it so that it's just like the uh, so, so the bots can't get to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's once the bots can't get to it, and that it is just like one of the auto things yeah. that loads in the description when we upload any videos. Yeah. All right. Good idea. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What's, is there anything going on this month, this month that people should be aware of? Yeah, we're going menu tasting and we're gonna report back on all of our little Christines and stuff we're trying. And is, if there's any menu items down there that um people feel like are- they have We slept on? Or they either slept on or that that you guys had that and you wish you hadn't ordered it because of a thing that happens at a wedding. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah, good Because there's a lot of good advice out there. There's some bad stuff I've too, but some good advice. so much good advice. From people you get some pretty weddings. good advice from people. I've had some great advice. Yeah. You've been like, I've been shocked at how actually productive yeah. the, the advice has been. It's been incredible. Yeah. Everyone has, I've also, I've also been like inquiring, you know what I mean? Just yeah. asking people like, what what do you wish someone had told you before, like while you were planning? Like yeah. what, what do you feel like was like the missing key link here? I'm, I'm excited for um, people to give really good and constructive criticism for your parenting styles as well too, in a couple of years. Yeah, I don't want to hear any of that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's been nice. <laughs> we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.